and welcome to Edipedia World. I am Sri Radhika Singhal. So in the last class, we discussed that how we are going to analyze the security. Now, if you have invested in security A, B, C, D, E, that is a bundle of securities. The analysis of those all security is called as portfolio management because all those security is called as your portfolio. And analyzing the return and risk of that portfolio is called as portfolio management. So you can say that portfolio management is a process of selection of bundle of investments. Now, why we invest in a security to earn certain return by making a balance between the risk. Now, how you are going to make your portfolio? There are certain securities with a high return and a less risk and there are certain securities with a less return and a less risk. So how that bundle will be comprised of and how you are going to select the securities in order to maintain a balance between the two so that you can maximize your return and minimize your risk is an art of portfolio management and analyzing this portfolio is called as Portfolio analysis. So likewise, while analyzing a single security, it is called it security analysis. When you are analyzing the behavior of all those securities in your portfolio, it is called as portfolio analysis. So in a portfolio, how you are going to analyze the risk and return, there are certain tools or you can say there are certain mathematical ways to compute the risk and return. So one is mean. You all are aware that we analyze that what is the average return of all the portfolio. What if if you have to compute the risk? So for risk, the one mathematical tool is standard deviation and variance. So standard deviation computes that how much variation could be there from your expected return. So it measures the risk and the state of possible deviation in the return of an asset. Now, how to compute this standard deviation? There are two ways to compute the standard deviation. One is that you analyze whatever past trend is there. And the other is that whatever expected return is there, what is the probability of that? Like I say, if there's a 20% probability, the share price may go from 15% to 20% return could be increased by 5% and there is also probability you can say 80% probability that from 15% the return could go down by 10% so the variation in this return that is of high or low analyzing that variation that how much risk is there is called as standard deviation so all these things you have studied already in your 11th and 12th while measuring and this is also in your maths if you all remember to compute standard deviation if first we are doing the competition of, st of standard deviation basis the past data so whatever mean is there so mean is the average return of all the securities so if you say there are n securities so to compute the average what we do x1 whatever return is there in the return 1 plus return of second security plus return of third security and you add back till the nth security. Let's say that that is 10 security. So you divide that by 10. So you get an average return on your one security. Standard deviation is measuring the difference between the actual and the mean return. So standard deviation is x1 minus x bar. x bar is the mean square plus x2 into x bar square divided by n. The whole value is under root. So whatever value received. So either you can say x1 minus x bar or you can say summation of x1 minus xn ka square divided by n. The value is the standard deviation. And in case you have the probability figures, then you can multiply the return with the probability. This will give you a mean figure. Then you can compute the difference between each return with the mean that how much variation is there and can multiply it with the probability. Under root of the whole value will give you the standard deviation. No, this is very technical. 
let's do an example to understand this an investor is considering investment in security a or security b so if the state of economy is boom which has a probability of 0.2 a's return will be 30% and the b return will be 10% if the state of economy is normal which has a probability of 60% a return is 20 and b that security return will be 20% and in case of recession a's return will be 10% and b's return is 30% so we have to compute what is the expected return of security A and B. So what we will do, we will expect the return of security in A and B. We have to compute the mean of the securities. Boom, there are 20% probability. So let's start with A. So for, to compute the expected return of security A, we compute the return multiply with probability. The sum of all will give you the expected return of security A. So 30% into 0.2 plus 20% into 0.6 plus 10% into 0.2 will give you the expected return on security A which is 20%. Likewise, to compute B's expected return, we will multiply the probability with B's return. So 0.2 into 10% plus 0.6 into 20% plus 0.2 into 30% will give you the average or you can say expected return on B. This is how to compute expected return. Now, if I ask you to compute the risk, because in boom, A will give you 30% and B will give you 10%. So there is a variation from boom to normal of 10% and from normal to recession. So to compute the risk attached with the security, we have to compute the standard deviation. Standard deviation is computed by taking the difference between the return and its mean. Mean is 20. So in A security standard deviation will be, you can see that boom it is 30% return. 30 minus mean which is 20%, that is equal to 10. 10 square will be 100. 100 multiplied by 0.2. Right? Likewise, we did it for other periods also, normal and recession, which is 20 plus 20 square into 0.6 and 10 minus 20 square into 0.2 which gives you a standard deviation of 6.32% and for security B it's again the same which is 6.32% this is how to compute the standard deviation of a security so both the security are equally risky now how to compute when the security are equal risky so there's a better measure to evaluate the riskiness or you can say the relative measure of risk and return which is called as coefficient of variation. Coefficient of variation measures the proportion of deviation in comparison to its expected return. So in our previous examples, when the expected return and the standard deviation is same, the coefficient of variation will also be same in both the cases. So you can invest in either of the securities because both the securities have equal probability, equal return. No one is less risky or no one is less beneficial. So coefficient of variation is equal to standard deviation by expected return. So in this case, if I have to compute coefficient of variation in security A, that will be 6.32 divided by 20%. Now, this is we analyze the return, the riskiness of single security. What if I have to analyze between the security that how my one security is reacting to other security and how if I say my portfolio and another portfolio has a relation in between. What I mean, if my portfolio A is going up, so what will be the impact on my security B or portfolio B? It will go up, that is in the same direction. Or it will decline, it's in the opposite direction. Or you can say there is no movement at all, there is no impact on my portfolio B. To analyze the co-movement between these two portfolios, we compute the covariance. So covariance is a co-movement of two variables together in relation to a security market. It is used to measure the interactive risk between two securities or against the two markets. So if that covariance is plus one, it is positive. It implies that both the securities are moving in the same direction. If the covariance is negative, that means that both the securities are moving in opposite direction. If one is in the bullish, it's going to the upward trend, others in downward trend. 
and if the covariance is zero that means that there is no co movement one security movement does not affect the other security to compute covariance it is computed by multiplying the difference between the expected return and actual return multiply of one variable multiply with the expected return and its mean difference with the other return let's say if variable a is there variable a has a mean of 10 if the expected return is 12 so the difference will be 2 now we multiply this difference with the another variable which i have denoted here as y so covariance is x minus x bar into y minus y bar the whole summation is divided by n now if there is a probability giving we are going to compute the same a probabilistic approach instead of divided by n we will multiply it with the probabilities let's do an example for better understanding that how to compute the covariance the return of the assets 1 and 2 under five possible state of nature are given below so state 1 they all have a different probability and we know the return in all the cases so to calculate the expected return in asset 1 we can multiply the probability with the return in asset 1 to calculate the expected return on asset 2 we can multiply the probability with the return on asset 2 now what is the co movement in both the assets to study the co movement we will compute the covariance so return in asset 1 is 16% and the return in asset 2 is 14% so the covariance will be mean is 16% so we will reduce minus 10 which is return in asset 1 less 16 and we multiply it with the probability multiply also with the movement of the other security so the mean in other security is 14% and its return is 5 in the first nature of state so 5 less 14 multiply by minus 10 into minus 16 into minus 1 likewise we do it from 2 to 5 we can compute the covariance of 1 and 2 which is 26% this denotes positive return this implies that both the shares or securities are moving in the same direction better measure of studying the covariance is correlation covariation is covariance of the two securities divided by the standard deviation multiplied this is generally in the range of minus 1 to plus 1 that is the value is either minus 1 to 0 or it could be 0 to plus 1 So if it is zero to plus one, that is there is a positive correlation. So we can say that both the securities are moving in the same direction. If it is from zero to minus one, there is a negative correlation between the two securities, and both the securities are moving in the opposite direction. And the value comes out to be zero. That means there is no co movement between these two securities. This is how to study the risk or the correlation between the. two securities that's all for today thank you and keep smiling